evening guys how we doing are we good hope you're all doing great Tregs here first off I'm excited to be here because I'm gonna bring someone in who's just joined okay it's a client turn coach so we're gonna get him in straight away and we're gonna start talking connecting here we go go you all right mate how you doing yeah good you I'm fantastic mate how are you yeah great mate <laughs> You're not nervous, are you, son? <laughs> no, not much. <laughs> nah, don't be nervous, mate. Don't be nervous. So, listen, going to make this super easy for you, mate, all right? It's, we know each other. We've met each other quite a few times. Just going to be conversational, dude. First off, guys, um, Craig is um, he's, he's a lad that applied for a transformation program we ran in Hereford. We ran it around the country, all of our boot camps, in 2017. And I read his application over again today, and it said... Um, I want to join because I've got kids. I want to be a healthier version for them. And I want to be able to run, run around more with them. So one of the reasons why we chose him. Since then, he's lost three stone. And he's recently got himself qualified as part of the coaching team. And now assists the awesome Sean um, in teaching the lads down in Hereford. It's Craig Warren. How are you, buddy? I'm good, mate. Really yeah. good. Thank you for volunteering to do this. Sorry. Okay. First off... <clears throat> Tell us a little bit about um, your backstory, what you were doing exercise-wise sort of before you um, joined 30 Plus. Tell us a little bit how you were feeling and what you were doing and life, etc. Bit of walking at work, but that was yep. about it, really. Um, Xbox was probably my, <laughs> was probably right. my exercise at the time. Right. Um, yeah, other than that, nothing really. Um, nothing at all. <laughs> What what had you done in the past, like when you were younger, say in your twenties? Uh, played a lot of football. Yeah. Um, you know, bit of rugby when I was at school wasn't that good, but <laughs> uh, I tried. Um, yeah, but you know, I gave that up. Went to college, discovered the booze, and that was about it, really. So, so what age were you when you applied for the transformation with us, bud? Two years ago or eighteen months ago? Uh. It would have been six months before my 40th birthday. Okay. So how long was it that you'd not really been exercising for? Oh, years. Years. Yeah. 15 years. Wow. Easy. Wow. Yeah. What was your energy levels and that like at the time? I thought they were okay, to be honest. But sure. looking back now, what my energy levels are like now, <clears throat> they were non-existent, really. Sure. Um, so, so were you sort of telling yourself, "I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something," or like, what? What was that moment when you went, "Right, shit. This. I really need to do this now." Yeah, well, I'd, I'd done a lot of yo-yo dieting. You know, I'd lose a bit, smash it back on, plus a bit, lose a bit more, and you know, it was just going round and round like that. Really, um, the catalyst was, God, I'm 40 next year. I need to do something. And uh, and then I saw the post about the T one hundred. One hundred, yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, I won't get selected, but I'll fill it out anyway and have a go. And yeah, I was surprised to get the email back to say, yeah, you're in. Amazing, amazing. I, I love that. Like as like the founder of Thirty Plus, just to know that like we put on a free transformation and you just applied, and here we are now. We're going to talk about you know the journey and everything, but I think. What's really important is, like, you've made the first step. And a lot of people, that's the biggest thing. <clears throat> I tell this to all the coaches. Yeah. People coming on their yeah. first session are shit scared. They're nervous. They, they don't know what to expect. They've got all these anxieties. So tell me what that was like for you on your first session with Shawnee in Hereford. Because Hereford was quite relatively new then. Tell us about that experience yeah. and how you felt. Uh, yeah, it was... I turned up and, you know, we'd, we'd all met each other, you know, a couple of weeks before. Um, but I turned up, we were, I don't know, halfway through the warm up. And I thought, shit, I'm not going to stick this long. Because wow. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. I was going to die. But um, yeah, stuck at it. And um, I didn't miss a session actually in that first 28 days. So um, yeah, it was, it grew on me. And, and now I'm, I'm just hooked now. So, what was the training like that first time? Is it, is it, was it like anything that you've kind of done before? Uh, 
No, no, I'd never really done anything body weight. I, I always thought in my own mind, yeah, to lose weight, you just need to, you know, run or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. eat nothing and, and that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, what, what did you find, like, the other lads, like, on that first session, the camaraderie and the kind of support from Craig and that, like, what was that like? Did you, how did you feel? Yeah, it was good. Uh, we were quite new to each other, so, but even then, even back then when we didn't really know each other, it was still good. You know, everybody seemed to be there for the same reason. Everybody supported each other. Um, so, yeah, even back then it was it was quite close, but nothing like it is now. It's such a laugh now. Oh, it's, it's an amazing bunch of lads. So, so tell me what that kind of first sort of month was like, um, the changes that you made in your nutrition. I Because I wanted to think, right, there's people that are going to see this that were in your, that are in your, in, in where you were two years ago. You might, so imagine that you're yourself watching this now two years ago and you think, I've got to run and live off fresh air. Because a lot of people do. They think they've got to yeah. go, just run, run, run. When they're really heavy, that's the worst thing you can do when you're super heavy and literally um, just eat nothing, you know. Yeah. What was, what was the eye-opener for you in terms of like nutrition? What did you do differently, bud? I just <clears throat> ate a lot more good stuff. You know, because I was describe eating, good stuff. Describe good crap, stuff. Crap, 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 all the time, um, and I, I just sort of lived off chicken, but I, I just kind of put lots of spices on it and stuff like that, and just just changed it up like that. Lots of you know, lots of veg and stuff like that. So I was eating like a king, really. I was eating really good food and lots of it, um, but still, still ripping loads of weight off. Um, so that was that was an eye opener for me, really. You know that I could eat so much and still, you know, still lose all that weight. So, what did your sort of daily diet look like before thirty plus? Um, well, I'd drive to work, call in the local shop. You know, crisps, sweets, just you know, just loads of stuff that <laughs> wasn't any good for you. But it was you know, a daily routine and that's, you know, a rut I got into, I suppose. And yeah, I didn't really eat anything healthy. <laughs> everything right. was with chips, everything. It didn't yep. matter whether, yeah, you know, I could have something healthy, but it would always be with chips. <laughs> sure, sure. What about, um, you like your fluid intake at the time? What were you drinking mainly? Booze. Really? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Every night? Yeah. Um, yeah, most nights, I'd say. Uh, you know, call in, a few cans of lager, and all the time. So this is interesting, because I speak to a lot of guys that kind of come to me online, offline, and they're drinking every night. And I kind of say to them, okay, so why are you drinking every night? Is it is it for relaxation, or is it just a habit that you've got into, which is now the norm? Were yeah. you a bit depressed? Tell me a little bit more about why you were... So well, you weren't boozing heavily every night, just sort of a couple of cans, right? Yeah, just just a few cans, but it was every night. Yeah, right. it was, and it was just a routine, a, a rut, I think. Um, yeah, it it just it was just normal. Yeah, it just got to the stage where it was normal. You know, drive home from work, pick up a few beers, and drink them when I got home. And I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with the occasional few beers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you probably enjoy a good few beers now, but you've got the tools. I always say you've got the tools. So, yeah. so let me ask you this. Were you getting hydrated the next day after having a few beers in the evening? No. 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 Yeah, lots of coffee. Yeah. But that was probably about it. Um, <clears throat> well, tea and coffee, really, and that was it. I wasn't really drinking water as such. Sure. Um, I would have a drink of water, but not anywhere near what I needed, sure. to be honest. So, so this is really interesting, guys, because you might be watching this, and this is a rut. This is something that I see guys fall into. A couple of cans in the evening, no, and, you know, a couple of cans in the evening isn't that bad, but when you're doing it every night. And then when you don't get hydrated the next day and you don't eat anything nutritious, you are just, your energy levels are going to be through the floor. Your testosterone levels are going to be through the floor. Your, your motivation, your kind of your um, ability to kind of thrive in the workplace. It's all, I suppose you kind of, you're just kind of in a slump, aren't you, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, major league. Um, and it it wasn't until I sort of joined up with you that you sort of said, yeah, you need to be drinking sort of a, a litre of water for every 25 kilos. And I remember for that first month, I don't think I've ever gone to the loo so much in my life. Yeah. But what was your energy levels like? Yeah. Yeah. It felt much better. You know, all the yeah. extra steps. Yeah. They all... Yeah. <laughs> this is, for me, this is like, this never gets boring. Like when guys just get it. Because like, I remember when I first got it and it was like, Right, get hydrated. You can eat, because I'm a fat bastard, right? I love my food. But then if you just swap all the processed food for a load of like veggies and protein, you can still eat as much as you're putting on your plate of like the chips and the pasta yeah. or whatever. You're going to feel full. You can still be a fat bastard at heart, but lose timber. And it was like, it was like a fucking light bulb went off in my head. I was like, whoa, like, I'm losing timber. I've got energy and I'm eating like a king. And it's so simple. All we did was switch your diet up. You could still eat loads, loads of sort of veggies and protein, but get yeah. hydrated. And <clears throat> I think so many people are going through the internet, going through these health magazines, looking for a quick fix, looking for what can I have? What can I get? And then when we just give you those couple of tools and we see clients get energy, like that's the greatest gift we can give anyone. The, the weight loss almost becomes like a, a byproduct. It's like, because yeah. if, if a guy's gone round and he's had no energy for 15 years, and then all of a sudden you give him the tools to get energy, yeah, they, they are fully bought in, right? And was that how you felt? You're fully bought in, like after a week? Yeah. Yeah. When, <clears throat> once I knew what I was doing, um, it was, it, it just made sense. You know, drink more water, move more, and, and yeah, the real I, eye opener was the neat you yeah. know that was something that i never ever even thought of but yeah now i'm i'm obsessed with it <laughs> guys I'll just, I'll, I'll just stop in like so neat is is a game changer if you don't know what neat is it stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis it's the calories we burn on a day-to-day -day basis just moving so this is funny because i've been coaching now 13 years i only really stumbled upon it three years ago I was working with a bodybuilding coach and he was saying, got to get your knee up, got to get your knee up, got to get your knee up. I said, what's he on about? Like, it was just going over my head and got to walk everywhere. And I was like, what? Give me interval training every day. And then all of a sudden, I was chatting to, it's funny enough, I was chatting to a sports scientist who's a coach here at the gym. And I was talking about, like, how I dropped a load of weight when I returned to coaching after Christmas. And I couldn't realize, I, I, but I, my nutrition had been good after Christmas and I, I didn't realize why all of a sudden it was dropping off. And he said, well... You've gone from sat on your ass at Christmas to you're on your feet, your neat's gone up. And I was like, oh, hang on. Neat, neat, neat. Then I went out and bought a Fitbit and I was like, boom. And then all of a sudden, the whole industry started to take this kind of interest into neat. And, and what I found was it's a great thing that you can get all clients to do is walk more. Because, yeah. you know, years ago, if I'd have heard, I'm 40 now, if I'd have heard myself at 30 going, yeah, you've got to walk everywhere, I'd have been like, what? Like interval training, interval training. But I say this a lot. If I ask you to do interval burpees every day for a month, you're soon going to get knackered. You're soon going to get fed up. You're going to get sore. You're not going to be able to do it at a high intensity, which is what high intensity intervals are, because yeah. you're going to be knackered and you're, gonna, you're just going to hate it. But if all of a sudden I said to you, Craig, give me 15,000 steps a day for the next 28 days, you're going to go, I can do that. Yeah, it's going to take some time out of my day, but I can do that and you're going to enjoy it. And this is, like you said, it's such an eye-opener because now we can get like an overweight client and they're thinking, I'm 22 stone, for example. I've got to run. I've got to live off nothing. You know, you a 22 stone person goes out and starts running. They get injured. You put them on yeah. massively reduced calories, they're going to feel horrible. All right? But if you just say to me, get a Fitbit and start walking and switch your diet up and have more protein and veggies – and get hydrated. It's just a revelation, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's... It, and it's... Everybody does it without even thinking about it. You, Everybody walks. You know, yep. and it's something that you can do. You're helping yourself, and you're, you're not even thinking about it. So, and, and that's... I think that's one of the best ways of... of doing it, really. I think you're a bit of a... You're a step warrior, aren't you? Like, what, what's your average daily step count? How do you get your steps up, dude? Um, what are you getting on I'd a daily walk, basis? 
on a daily basis, um, I, oh, I average huh. about 28k, I think. 28,000 steps a day? Yeah, I think that's what my Fitbit's telling me at the moment. It's about 28k average. Dude, um, I'm I on my everywhere. feet coaching, and I'm only doing 15 to 17 and a half k. How are you doing that? You? Um, I walk to work. Um, then my job involves a lot of walking. Look at Karen. Um, <laughs> I seen Craig in KFC last week. He walked there, mind. I love it. <laughs> Loves it. Um, yeah, go on, yeah, Sorry. I, I just walk everywhere on like Mondays and Wednesdays when I train. I walk to work. Yeah. I spend all day walking at work. Then I walk home. Then I walk back into town to go training, train, and then walk back home. So it, you know, it, it, they all they all add up. So were you walking as much before you discovered neat? Um, I was different jobs at work um, that didn't involve as much work uh, walking, but um, yeah, since I discovered it, I just I just hammer it. Got it. And then Steve put, Craig puts the proclaimer <laughs> to shame. Loves it. But but this is the thing, guys, because we're going to share this like mad. Any of you people watching it, you know, and you just want to get moving, get starting out, like get those steps in, just move. Turn it into a game. Just turn it into a game. This is, this is the great thing, what all these um, fitness companies are doing now. He's bringing out these apps and then making it a game. I remember speaking to Jamie Alderton on a podcast about this, and he was saying to me, and it really resonated, why is it? Look, that, I'll give you an example. When I was in university, I could shut myself in a room on a Friday and play championship manager for 72 hours, not shower, not move, I, I'd probably even wear like, a, I'd have like a, a coat on for the cup final, like a, you know, like an old football manager's coat. I, I didn't even brush my teeth. I just ordered takeaways. And it got to the point where I was like, I couldn't even differentiate between what was going on in the real life football to my championship manager team. Why was that? <laughs> because I was hooked on it. The game. I was in, I was dialed in. Much like these kids now playing Minecraft or Fortnite, they're dialed in. Now, this is what Fitbits and um, Garmin's not doing. They're making you compete. They're turning it into a game so it becomes fun. Yes. So you're exercising and you're not even really realizing that you are because you're battling your mates. You know, yeah. there's that thing on at the end of the day where everyone's got a sink and you're like, oh, and then boom, so and so. I bet they ate it when you sink, didn't they? <laughs> uh, me, I've had a quiet week, actually, and me and Sean are in a. In a bit of a battle at the moment, we've got a bit of a challenge yeah. on the game. He's, he's winning at the moment as well. So uh... brilliant, but but it is, but you know, I think Fitbit have been criticised. People said, oh, you know, everyone's saying do ten k steps a day. It's just um, you know, it's just marketing. They don't. There's not really government guidelines. Listen, if you're currently sat on your ass doing nothing, and Fitbit is telling you to do ten k steps a day and make it fun and battle with your mates, I'm not having that slagged off at all. That is good. Yeah. I don't care if it's marketing. It's yeah. getting people off their ass. It's like when this whole, um, the, what was the thing the kids went crazy for? Um, walking around the Pokemon thing, yeah? The Pokemon Go. Yeah. Everyone was slagging that off. It was getting kids off their ass and going out and hunting for Pokemon with their parents. It's getting them moving more. Yeah. Like, that's, that's amazing. That is amazing. I, you know, and it, we're, we're turning it into a game, so it's fun. People have this association that, or oh, training us, it's like a misery. It's got to be, oh, it's a suffering. It's not, is it? No, no. It, every exercise should be enjoyable. Yep. You know, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. It's as simple as that. So if, it, if it's made into a game, people enjoy games. It's... Do you know one of the best things? I was doing these half marathons, and um, it's when you get your 10,000 steps go off and you've only done a couple of miles, you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Craig, tell me about the transformation today. How much weight have you lost? Um, I got down to my target weight. I think I started off at about 17 stone-ish. Right. Um, and I wanted to get to 14. And right. That, and that was my target. And I hit that really quickly, to be fair. Wow. I think I hit that um, not long after the end of the T100. Um, and I was happy with that. So... I'm for the first time since my school days. I think I'm I'm happy with my weight. Brilliant. So that's one thing I don't really want to change. Um, yeah. Don't want to lose any more weight. I just want to, you know, everything that's left. I just want to try and tighten it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, lots of 
body weight, lots of kettlebells, things like that. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you this, because this is the most important thing. I think this is the, the, the reason why, you know, for me, this is what drives me, is um, the kids. What, tell me how the kids have benefited from this new you. Well, I, I just don't want to sit around anymore all the time, you know. And I was working a lot of hours back then as well. Um, I would work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And it, you know, it's been an eye-opener. Um, and now I've just, just got more energy for them, really, um, to the point where I say, oh, you know, let's go wherever. And they say to me, are we walking? <laughs> Brilliant. And I'm like, yeah, Brilliant. we are. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I don't think they're fans of walking, but um, I'm, I'm trying to trying to teach them. <laughs> do you do you think they really notice a difference in you? Yeah. Did you used to like make excuses to not do stuff and things like that? Yeah, yeah. And even if it was just stuff around the house, you know, I would, I would moan, and you know, and it would cause arguments, and you know. Not any, you know, I've moved on from that now, and yeah, yeah, I feel much better for it. So, tell us about some of the events that you've done as well. Because, bearing in mind, guys, this was a guy that is three stone heavier. He took the plunge, did a free program, he lost three stone, started to move a hell of a lot more. Also, tell the lads about the races that you've done. Um, I've done Eastern Castle 10k mud run for the last two years. Brilliant. Um, I've also done the Crocodile 8, um, which was an 8.8-mile 8 .8, uh, um, trail run as well. Well, part road, part trail run. Um, I've, I've actually paid for two half marathons, which have both been called off. So was one of them Gloucester? Sort of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a yeah. nightmare at the start of the year with this snow, mate. Yeah, it, it messed yeah. me up as well, yeah. dude. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've kind of got two half marathons paid for. I've just got to try and, you know, pick pick some more dates because they, they won't refund you. They, they just sort of move it on to another event. So. Yeah. Yeah, so th and just just generally, I, I like going training every week and I'm a bit of a bear with a sore head if I can't go. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's the change. Really. Would you say? Would you say mentally you're in a better place? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, went through quite a, a messy breakup, sort of middle of last year. Wow. Um, and um, if if I didn't have this to sort of vent, I, I think I might have been in, in quite a different place, sort of sure. now. No, no, I uh, hear you, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and like Sean and the lads really kind of helped me through that yeah, last yeah. year. Uh, uh, this is really interesting, dude, because I said this, I put a post out earlier in the week on Instagram and I thought well, it might cause a bit of a stir, but when you really think about it, like we're all out there, we're busy working men, trying to provide kids first, trying to keep the missus happy, we're grafting, we're all chasing money, of course we've got to earn, we've got to provide. But actually, <clears throat> and this might be controversial, the number one priority in anyone's life should be their health. Because once mm. you get your health first and you make it a priority, everyone else flourishes. So yeah. what I mean by that is your health and fitness should come up there and possibly in front with your family. And this sounds quite con controversial, but yeah. before everyone jumps down my throat, if you make your health a priority, you're going to be a better parent. You're going to cope yeah. with stress better. You're going to be a better partner. You're going to thrive in the workplace because your productivity is going to be through the roof. You're going to be a nicer person. If I want to be a nicer, better dad and calmer, I need to exercise. That's what I do. My missus knows that. She knows that I need to exercise because I suffered with depression in my late 20s. I had tough times. But that's why it's a priority in my life. Yeah. And once I've done my exercise, if I'm eating well, I'm doing my exercise, you... Everything else, everything else flourishes. And I often say this to people. If you've got stress in your life, I get there's alcohol. We turn to things, alcohol, drugs, gambling, whatever it is. But health and fitness is that outlet. It is that outlet. Yeah. And it's going to allow you to deal. Not saying it's going to cure your, 
your pressure or your, or your stresses, but it's going to help you to deal with that. So for me, my health and fitness is up there with my family. Yeah. It sounds controversial, um, but I believe that. And yeah. like you said, if you hadn't have been doing the exercise, you might have found yeah. an outlet in a, a different, not as, um, not as good uh, yeah. way. Yeah, I think definitely. Um, yeah, it was, I find that it's not just the physical side of this. It's, yeah. it's also the mental side. It, everything, it helps you. Um, and if, if I, I, I swear, if I hadn't have had that, then it would have been quite different, I think. Massive shout to Sean and all the Hereford boys, because it's just an, it's an amazing bunch down there. Really is. I remember when I turned up, I was a little bit late. I got lost on my tour recently. And when I rocked up, I kind of walked up that hill and just seen like 25, 30 of you train. It was an amazing feeling, dude. Amazing yeah. feeling. So isn't it interesting now, one thing that you said there, which was really poignant, is you said, if you don't train, you're a bit like a bear with a sore head, like you need it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you imagine, right, there's guys watching this that don't know how good they can feel. Right? You didn't know how good you could no. feel. But now you crave that. You crave that. Yeah. And it it, it, it it does fascinate me. It, and you just think to yourself, you know, I've said this time and time again, right? You could offer me a million quid right now, but say you're never allowed to exercise again. I'd probably turn it, I would turn it down because I would be miserable. Give me a yacht or whatever, all that. If I couldn't move, if I couldn't exercise, I'd be yeah. miserable. It's no good. And, and trust me, I've worked with a lot of successful guys over the years. They got money, they get sat. They're miserable because yeah. they're not happy in themselves. And yeah. I really think that, you know, people need to understand that exercise and making their health a priority is the fucking key to a fulfilling life. Yeah. 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 You, everybody needs something to work towards. And and goals, that, you know, I've, I've already signed up for another ten k month. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. End of Amazing. Because you have I, to. yeah, I I need to work towards summer, and um, yeah, there's a few of us doing it out of the boys. Um, but I've also roped a couple of lads in from work as well. So uh, yeah, there's a few of us going for it. Tell me a little bit. We're going to round up in about five ten minutes. Tell me a little bit the transition now to you wanting to become a coach and help out with Sean and all the lads down in Hereford. Tell us about that, because, you know, I see so many amazing things happen when people apply themselves. And there's also a lot of people that come for our programs and don't get results. It's not a case of, oh, you pay your money, you get results. You've got to do the work. Yeah. And, you know, like, I don't say anyone that comes in is going to lose three stone and might become a coach for us, but no one's stopping them. Sean yeah. did exactly the same. In fact, most of my coaches found me online and got qualified. So what, yeah. was that, what was that thing that gave you the confidence to go, do you know what? Quite fancy doing this. What, what, you know, because what a, what a journey from signing up 17 yeah. stone to then going, actually, I wouldn't mind being a coach. Yeah. It, it, I never thought at the start that, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, I'd join up. Might lose, you know, a few pounds and, and feel better. But I never thought I'd get to where I am now. Um, which is, yeah, it's quite amazing, I think. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, I can't put it into words. Um, so what was that moment, though, that you decided, yeah, I'm going to become a coach? And, and a Yeah, it, it, was, it was a post Anthony put up um, saying, you know, we might be on the lookout for some, some extra help, coaches in Hereford, anybody interested? You know, you know what, I've taken quite a lot out of this and I wouldn't mind putting a bit back in. Brilliant. And 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 that's that was what you know sort of turned it for me. Mate, um, do you know what? It's great because you know you know what it feels like, and you can pass that off. That's the kind of people I want to come through and yeah. pass on that message because you get it. When yeah. you get it, you get. Oh, I'm evangelical about it. People say to me, "Bloody hell, Trey, you're so into it." But like, I I know what it's like to feel shit. I know what it's like to feel depressed. I also know what it's like to wake up with energy and feel good. And yeah. and you get that now, you get that, yeah. and you're able to pass that message on. Yeah, and and I I took the training sessions Wednesday night, and I was I was absolutely buzzing afterwards. Yeah. Only only 
the second time, actually. Buzz, what um, was your first one yeah, like? I was sort of half really excited and half absolutely bricking it. But, yeah, once I got there and started, I was all right. And, and this, I was nervous the second time, but kind of got into it quicker, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, I think as I go along, it'll just get easier and easier. Yeah, but I yeah, really you just grow into it. it. You grow into yeah. it, but and and you know, be yourself. Just be yourself. I I often said to coaches that come through under me is like, look, I'm loud. I'm a shouty bastard. You don't have to try and be me. Just be yourself. Be yeah. yourself, and you will. You'll grow into it, and you get more confident. But the fact you were nervous means you care, buddy. Yeah, it's as simple yeah. as that. You know. So, tell us a little bit about now about what your goal is moving forward with your health, your fitness, the races. And then I'll ask you one more question after that. Uh, yeah. Well, lots more runs. Um, love. I'm addicted to trail running at the moment, but Me too. also, yeah, also get my, um, a couple of half, you know, a few more half marathons in. And the aim is to try and do something in 2020, you know, London Marathon, maybe, um, and, and kick on towards that. That is that is my aim. Brilliant. Right now, yeah. And you're 40 now, 40, same as me? 41, I am now, yeah. 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 Nothing, is it? Nah, it's just a number. <laughs> so on that note, buddy, like, what would you say to anyone, I'm not talking about trying to get them to join us, whatever, like, to anyone that is just, you know, was where you were two years ago, and wants to make a change, but thinks they're past it, thinks they've got to go out and run bloody 10 miles three times a week, hasn't got a clue, what would be your advice to them right now? You've already said it, mate. Age is just a number. It, it doesn't matter how old you are. Find something you enjoy, and, and, and you won't even notice you're doing it. I mean, we, we go and train, and we, and we train hard, but it's fun. We we have a lot of fun doing it, and and that is, and that is the be all and end all. If you, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it, and it's as simple as that, really. So you just got to. My advice would be find something that you really enjoy. Yeah, it's going to get you off the couch essentially. You know. Yeah. Could, could be table yeah. tennis. Could be anything. Go and swimming. Go and do something you enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. So listen up, mate. You have been a great guest. It wasn't too bad, was it? We made it happen. Um, yeah. Craig, listen, mate, honestly, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm a me, I'm so chuffed you, mate. Like, I've been doing this 13 years. I've been coaching over 30s men eight years. The buzz just doesn't go away. just doesn't stop. No. Because, no. Um, and it doesn't come down to my business or money or anything like that. Just love seeing people transform their lives. And all I want you to do now, mate, is along with Sean, is just keep passing on that message. Just get out there. Just keep being an inspiration. Keep changing lives. And, you know, when any new clients come along in Hereford, you, you, you can show them what, what can be done, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, mate. How do you feel reflecting over the last sort of 18 months? Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of changes in my life over the last 18 months, to be honest. And, yeah. and not all health-related, to be fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'd like to say that I'm in, in an amazing place right now. So, yeah. Amazing. It's all good. And and the kids are chuffed. They're happy. They they're happy with their dad being active and running around. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mate. Yeah, definitely. Excellent, Craig. I really appreciate it, mate. I will see you soon because I'm going to come down to Hereford for a Christmas knees up. Um, nice. Sean, top man for all your hard work. All the Hereford lads, you're a great bunch. I'm really proud of you. Keep working hard. I'll see you at Christmas, Craig. Been a top guest. Cheers, and mate. I'm gonna about to make you very famous, dude. All right. <laughs> Keep trucking. Have a good weekend. <laughs> oh, take yeah. the Airford crew, and I'll see you very soon, <laughs> right, me babbers. Take care, buddy. See you, mate. Thanks, guys. Bye, bye.